I'll call the meeting to order of the Kerrville City Council on Tuesday, April the 25th at 6 o'clock p.m. Uh, we will start off with the invocation uh, and we will follow that with the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led by Matt from the Boy Scouts Troop 111. Please make sure your cell phones are in the opposition. You can stand if you wish. Father, I thank you that we have the liberty to gather in this house tonight, Lord. We ask for your wisdom. We ask for your mind. We ask for your guidance in all things. We're so wonderfully impressed, Lord, with all of the beauty of your creation. We're so thankful that we're able physically and mentally to be here this evening. We ask that you would guide us and lead us in all of our decisions, that whatever we do, we may bring glory to the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Will you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. And we want to welcome the Boy Scouts Troop 111, led by Mark Brown here tonight. Raise your hands for us this evening. Let's give them an applause. This is a special project for merits, I, I presume, so make sure everybody stays awake. Uh, Naaman, are you in the group? <laughs> He's a member. <laughs> That's a, a sad tale. Okay, item number one is announcements of community interest. Ms. Berry? Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, the City of Kerrville is still accepting applications for lifeguards to work at the <laughs> Olympic pool for this summer. Applicants must be at least 16 years old and available to work regularly from late May through the end of July. The starting pay is $8.75 an hour and training is provided through the Parks and Recreation Department. Applications are available at City Hall or online at kerrvilletx.gov. The Kerrville Police Department is also accepting applications for the next Junior Citizen Police Academy. This free academy is a great experience for kids ages 11 to 14 and gives a behind the scenes look at the police department. Applicants must live within Kerr County and be entering 6th, 7th, or 8th grade this fall. The academy will be held at the Doyle School Community Center June 5th through 16th. Classes will be held from 8 a.m. to noon each day. There are 24 spots in the class, which will be filled on a first-come, first-served basis. Applications are available at the police department and must be turned in uh, by May 24th. The Kerrville Police Department will also be hosting a drug take-back event this Saturday, April 29th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the police department. You can bring your unwanted and unused prescription drugs or over-the-counter medications to this event to be disposed of safely. Also this Saturday, the Buttholdsworth Memorial Library invites you to attend a celebration for Dia de los Niños, Dia de los Libros, uh, also known as Dia. Um, it is a nationally recognized initiative that emphasizes the importance of literacy for all children. Stop by the library meeting room at 2 p.m. on Saturday to join in the celebration and learn about different cultures, taste new foods, and browse the library's collection of books about many different countries. This event is free and open to the public. For additional information, you can contact the library reference desk at 830-258-1274. And finally tonight, the public is also invited to join us for a ribbon cutting ceremony at the newly renovated Kerr Regional History Center on Friday, May 5th at 10 a.m. So we hope to see you there. And I might add to that, Caitlin, that uh, early voting has begun for municipal elections at the Calu Theater, and you can check online to see uh, the schedule for that. And also, I would like to recognize uh, briefly, we did this through KPUB, but the KPUB board um, recognized Kiana Deo and Bailey Doulis, who are the 2017 KPUB scholarship recipients. Uh, this scholarship was based upon academic achievement, financial contribution, extracurricular activity, and community service. Uh, there were very many excellent candidates. I was uh, fortunate to be on uh, the selection committee. Uh, I was extremely impressed by the both the academic and extracurricular accomplishments of these students and all of their contributions to the community as well. It was really an amazing thing and a difficult decision to make, but congratulations to not only those recipients, but all of them who participated. Any other announcements by council? Um, if not, then item two is the consent agenda. 
Um, I'm going to ask that 2B and 2C be removed from the consent agenda for discussion. Does any council men, uh, member wish to have any others removed? If not, I will entertain a motion to approve 2A and 2D. So moved. We have a motion second. and we have a second. All in favor, please raise your hand. Motion carries five to zero. Item number 2B is a contract to freeze and nickels for engineering services for the construction of the Legion lift station and Force Main in the amount of $734,000. Um, this was put on here by uh, staff and basically for uh, staff is my only question. I know uh, there is a, a summary statement uh, expressing the need for the lift station. I know we've talked about it for a number of years and it was in the 12 items that were high priority that Friesen Nichols listed uh, back when they did their analysis of water and wastewater. Um, my question to staff is we had this um, approved, this design in the budget for 2018. Um, I believe we've moved forward the stadium tank to repaint 492,000 and um, we moved also forward the rehabilitation of the oxidation ditch for a million and a half, which was really high priority as well. So I'm in support of both of these things. My only question to staff is financial. Um, are we capable of moving that uh, design? That's about three quarters of a million dollars and it wasn't in this year's budget. Uh, that's correct. Uh, this is uh, an item that has been identified within the wastewater master plan. Uh, it was not in your original uh, fiscal year budget, uh, but we, through other uh, project savings and other pieces, uh, we have been able to uh, put the funding together to go ahead and move this design effort forward. So that'll just come out of water sewer operating funds? Uh, not necessarily operating funds, but capital project funds. Okay. Um, I know that the oxidation ditch uh, design we contracted with Friesen Nichols, I believe, last meeting. That's correct. Okay, and it said in there that we will be able to maybe go out for bid at the summer of 2017, this summer? That is the hope for the oxidation ditch, yes, ma'am. Okay, because I know it was in dire need of help as well. Um, if that's your recommendation, when do you think that we could go out for a bid? When do you think we could complete design for the Legion? Sure. Uh, my understanding is that we hope to come back to this council in the late winter of uh, 2018 uh, time frame. I, I believe that's the schedule. Yeah, so it's approximately one year for design on this. So uh, we'll be coming back winter, spring time frame, uh, hopefully to, to be able to go to bid. Well, actually, it's less than what it was originally uh, budgeted for the design. We certainly appreciate that. So. Does council have any questions for either Friesen Nichols or staff? My understanding is not only for design, it's design and carrying it through the construction also. Yes, that's not correct. Construction, the but just construction. Administration. Engineering. Engineering. Engineer. That's correct. Bidding and all. That's correct. Okay. Uh, if, are there any questions from the audience? If not, I would entertain a motion to um, approve. Second. Second. We have a motion in two seconds. All in favor, please raise your hand. Motion carries five to zero. Item number 2C may be a little bit more complicated. Um, this is to award a contract to Freeze and Nichols for engineering services for the trihalomethane reduction project. Um, I don't know if anyone, Mr. Hoppy, would you want to read the summary statement or would you care to? I would like for the audience to know what we're engaging in here. Sure. Um, essentially, uh, there are TTHM, uh, the total trihalomethane uh, limits that are prescribed by TCQ because of a number of reasons within our system. Uh, there have been several uh, overages over the years. Uh, and so we have, the city has been very aggressive in uh, attacking what I would call the low hanging fruit on various projects to try to bring those TTHM levels uh, within uh, uh, the TCQ standards. Uh, we have uh, not achieved that unfortunately with that low hanging fruit. And so now this is the next step 
Uh, we are currently in a uh, 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 TCQ waiver process over this course of this next year, uh, and we they were al allowed us for that extension uh, based on uh, input that we would be you know, essentially moving forward with a design engineering effort on the next step uh, to, to we've, we've tried to find all of the taxpayer efficient methods, uh, and unfortunately uh, now we're to the next phase of, of more expensive projects that will hopefully solve this issue for us. Uh, I had a couple of questions on um, what we have done. We have, uh, in your discussion, said we've painted and rehabbed four of the five storage tanks. Is that the two, two at the <coughs> summit, two at um, the stadium, or where are they? Stuart, do you know the exact locations on those? The stadium tanks, are, we repainted them up at the summit as well. We repainted them the um, elevated tank and then we've done some touch-up paint on the other on some other tanks the other one um, college cove we painted a couple of years ago it um, was also supposed to help with the tthm reduction so the two <coughs> at the stadium one at summit and college cove and college cove yes. and what we did was paint them the lighter color to try to because heat exacerbates the problem with tghms the, the some of them were painted a lighter color and some of them were going back with white and they to get rid of the rust and hopefully and that did lighten up the colors as well as the, on the tanks oh, also one of the things you said that we've done and uh, to try to eliminate this problem is loop the dead end lines for better circulation I know that we talked about several budgets ago looping the entire water system and and the problem happens when the water is stagnant at the end of the lines, at the dead ends, and the chlorine and the heat uh, combine with the organic material, and that's where we grow these trihalomethane. So that, I don't remember seeing anything to loop. Well, we at one time that was that was our gut feeling, and we, we were confident that that was what was happening. As we watch and we learn more about TTHMs, we notice that we're exceeding the uh, state allowable amount as it leaves the water treatment plant. And so no matter how much work we do, and even though we're getting those numbers down with these low-hanging fruit items that we've done, painting tanks, putting aerators in, looping lines, flushing, all of those things help, but not to the degree that it's going to be necessary to get us within the state regulations. We have to do something at the plant, and those two options are the, the chloramines that are in the agenda bill, and then also um, or another alternative would be the um, uh, carbon filters would be another alternative to look at to, to get those numbers uh, in compliance. Well, let me ask you, we, we um, also approved the design for the rehab of the clarifier at the water treatment plant. Yes. And it's very old and probably should have been done a couple of years ago. So we're in the process of doing that also with Freeze and Nichols. Um, do you think that once that goes online, and I think that's this summer as well, mm -hmm. we're going to look at that, should we wait and see what that does. I mean, I don't see why we would do a summary because if, if that is corrected and that's one of the big processes at the water treatment plant, can we not expect to see a change from doing that? No, ma'am. Unfortunately not. That process gets um, the solids out of the water and all the particulates out. The carbon that's in there is actually in solution. It, it does not remove any of the carbon feature. And so when you add your chlorine to, our, to, that, to that clean of water even, it's still going to generate the TTHM, still exceed the, the requirement. And, and if we didn't, if we did away with that clarifier and, and put in like some kind of alternative system, maybe um, reverse osmosis or ultrafiltration, that was one of the reasons they, they did an ultrafiltration ultra plant instead of a, a, an addition to the to the uh, conventional plant was to attack some of these these items like this. <clears throat> Well, I, I was reading a little bit about um, chloramines, and we have a, a water consultant we've used in our personal business in San Antonio, and a while back he warned us about the chloramines. Um, there's some real drawbacks to that because it's chlorine mixed with ammonia um, from what the description is, and it makes the chlorine last longer. It doesn't dissipate as quickly so that the chlorine can attack the pathogens, but you're stuck with the ammonia effect. And so in the report, I was listening to a lady in California, actually online, um, she attributed her rashes, her digestive problems uh, from a byproduct with the chloramines called NDMA. And I'm not gonna even try to say what that acronym stands for, but it's a byproduct of that. 
And uh, it's not only a carcinogen, but it's an irritant. And uh, so not only is it damaging, uh, and there's no official studies on it, but there are a lot of testimonials uh, to the body, but it's also more corrosive to the infrastructure. We, so. we, initially, we stayed away from chloramines, and that's why we did so much looking for the low-hanging fruit, doing the repainting of the tanks, looping the lines. All of that was work in, intentionally to stay away from chloramines because as a water system, we don't like them. Uh, we would prefer not to use them. They, they're, they offer their own set of problems that we're going to have with our system if we decide to go that way. But the, the fact of the matter is, is it solves the TTHM issue. You know, we're an enforcement action from TCEQ to get that under control. And so we know it's a tried and true method. We know it will work. We just, we, we're up against the wall. There's, there's very few other things you can do to get rid of this unless you do it. This is the next phase. If, if, if council decides, hey, we want to um, build a whole new water treatment plant, there's new water treatment plants that will get out there, reverse osmosis, gets all of it out. But this is the next step, if you will, that will cure the, the TTHM issue that we're having. And our consultant is here, and he'd be more than happy to get into all the weeds that I... Uh, Richard, would you care to elaborate? Good evening, Council. I'm Richard Weatherly with Friesen Nichols. Um, and, I, you know, you, you're right, Mayor, that the switching to chloramines, you know, adding ammonia to chlorine does exactly what, what you said. Um, and I think Stuart was right as well that, you know, chloramines has been used, it's probably used by, I would guess, 80 to 90 percent of the water systems in Texas. Chloramines is used for that. And it does have its own other, there, there are, you know, other issues that moving to chloramines could cause to a water system. And that will be something that the city will, you know, will be helping the city with as part of this project as well, getting them prepared for um, an action plan uh, to, to, for that switch, if that's even the option that they chose. Really, I think what this, the upfront part of this contract is going to show is um, looking at the filter option versus the chloramine option. And really it's gonna be come down to a, uh, you know, a cost decision. If the costs are close, then you know, the filters could be, could be a very good viable option that doesn't have those byproducts. But if the cost is not close, then that's just a decision that would be need to be made. Um, but I will say, you know, I think that's the only comfort that you should take is that, you know, a majority of the systems in Texas do use chloramines for their disinfection method. Other? I actually had understood that there were only a few that use chloramines. Are we using it at all in our system now? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think when he says the majority of the system, that'd be the majority of the surface water plants in Texas. If they're groundwater, they don't use them. They, they don't have this don't problem. Don't need to, yeah. Correct. Yes, right. Yes, right. So let me see if I can play back what I heard you say. Sure. Chromings have their own nuances such as attacking maybe more aggressively the infrastructure. There are comments that it may have some, but no limits by the TCEQ or or no, no notification limits or identification by the uh, TCEQ or EPA. Right. There's, the, you know, and uh, this may be too detailed, but there's two rules that the TCEQ and EPA has. One is the disinfection byproduct rule, which is where the THMs fall under. Right. And then there's a total coliform rule, which is really just your chlorine residual. That's really your main disinfectant in the water. You got to keep that up. When you just use free chlorines, it's pretty easy to keep that level up. When you switch to chloramines, it, it's more difficult to keep that, that base residual level up. I guess I'm addressing the issue that there are some known issues with our current system that the, the TTHMs definitely have risk associated with us. Correct. So we are, with legal, ethical situation up against the wall to do something. Correct. We need to do something. You're proposing to come back with a study. Part of this already study will say to this council and to the staff, here are what we think. Here are the trade-offs. Tell us where to go. Right. So that's part of what we're, it's being purchased with the agreement that we passed tonight. Exactly. 
Yeah, we're not agreeing to chloramines by agreeing on, okay, oh, that, no. that's, that's the main, yeah. yeah. Well, it's and, just and, one of the possibilities. Right, because that, that was one of the questions I had is, is there a known level of chloramines or, you know, that, and, and again, you can go back throughout the history and, you know, <coughs> saccharin was terrible, then it wasn't terrible, now it's terrible again. And so, you know, this, the studies uh, you know, are shown, so, I, it, so there isn't any known definite factors with chloramines or tests health related there may be people out there who do have issues with it right. but you know it's I think I understood you to say <laughs> like a food allergy that you thought it would probably come down to a financial decision and and you indicated if the chloramine or the chlorine solution would be so much more than the other tell me just give me an, for future reference Help me understand how much more that is. Is that 2x, 3x, 5x, 10x? I would say within. I would say within 2x. Probably shouldn't be saying the, the guess. Okay. Guess, well, but, no. Um, it, I would say within 2x. Is I'm an engineer guess. and I understand. Right. Okay. So I'm just trying to get a handle on where the ball is. Right. And, and okay. for the and, and for the Kerrville system, they have the surface water plant. And they also have groundwater yeah. wells as well. And so that would need to be converted. At all, at all the facilities to chloramines. And that's, okay. that's really why I, I, I don't have that good of a handle on it is because of that aspect okay. of it. 80% Thank of, you. of the surface water use chloramines. Mm -hmm. 80? I thought it was 90. 80. I, I would, that, that's just my guess, but I would. I thought you said 80. But 90, 80 to 90 of the systems that, that we work with, especially around the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, Houston, Austin, water. San Antonio, especially all those communities, our surface water communities, and they all use chlorine. And in the vast majority of the population in Texas are on surface water. Correct. I, okay. I'm sorry. If, Ms. if we change and go to chloramines, mm -hmm. will that mess up our deal with TCEQ on the ASR wells? They let us put the water in if we treat it with chlorine, but they won't care if we change to chloramine. I believe it just has to meet drinking water standards when you put it okay. down. This will be a dis dif different disinfection okay. process. But it'll still meet. We okay. would require to notify them, but I don't, I don't, I don't anticipate any problem okay. with that. I was curious, how did we arrive at the uh, estimate? I know it's usually about 10% of the cost of the project. So um, if you did granular activated carbon filters, and obviously you're recommending there's only two mm -hmm. alternatives for us mm -hmm. with all these other things we've done. Uh, how are those installed? How expensive are they? What kind of process is that? Um, the, on, on the, the cost of them, I think that's, that's really probably where, that's really where the uh, cost estimate of this, of the design came through, is looking at really the, the, grant, the activated carbon filter metho uh, methodology. Um, so that one, this one would be like in the 10% of the, the, this this 300,000 is about 10% of what the filters could potentially end up costing. Um, I know that it's, an, it's, it's a, a serious issue. I know one of our constituents has already put a $7,000 treatment system up at the summit because that's where a lot of the uh, bad tests come back um, in their home. So, and I know we're, we have these reports now ongoing two, two to three years. Um, the only other alternative that I could see is that we um, go out for a request for a proposal, uh, just, you know, see if there's any other items out there. Um, we've obviously not been able to solve it so far. Um, so if we went out for a request for proposal um, to see if there's any other methodologies that we could use. It, yeah, no, what they're... Well, it's, it, there may be, I mean, they have their solutions. There may be well, other there are firms. two solutions. That's right. For us. Are there, do you think, in the whole universe of solutions, there are 10 or 15 others we could look at? And that's correct. And, and what, in the process of developing this proposal, we did try to trim it to the two most tried and true and common methodologies to really limit the studying component of this. I think the, I think the city staff is ready to get quickly, more quickly to the solutions. I think We've we structured the proposal now. Yeah, we, we actually got a year deferral already. So, Yes, you know, yeah, we yes, can't just that's exactly right. Start we, from scratch, I don't think. 
we, we have asked for an extension from TCEQ. We were supposed to have our TC our TTHMs under control by last December. Right. That's kind of why this is is um, written the way it is, is so that we can move as fast as we can um, and get to the get to the goal line. Hopefully by this December. Actually, we only have seven months. We don't even have a year. I know. So we don't we, even have. Yeah. They already got one extension. So. They're pretty lenient on that. But anyway, that was the other. That was just the other alternative that we have. And there are a number of places online, you know, that, that do water treatment, but uh, it's up to council what you decide we should do. Any questions from the audience? If not, I'll wait for a motion. I'll move approval of this contract. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the contract with Friesen Nichols for engineering services for the city of Kerrville's treatment plant, the amount of 287000 All in favor, raise your hand. It'll carry five to zero, and you better do it right. <laughs> We're counting on you. <laughs> okay. Item number 3A is ordinance number 201709, amending chapter 26, the buildings and building regulations. Article 8, Building Board of Adjustment and Appeals of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Kerrville, Texas, by amending the membership qualifications for said board and ending <coughs> the term limits containing a cumulative clause, containing a savings and severability clause, establishing an effective date, and providing other matters related to the subject. Uh, Council, this is the second reading on this ordinance. Uh, there have been no changes, as we were told, so I would, if there are no questions, I'll ask for a motion. So moved. We a have second. a motion to approve and a second. All in favor, please raise your hand. Carries five to zero. Item number three B is ordinance number 2017-10, amending chapter 66, library of the code of ordinances of the city of Kerrville, Texas, by amending article two, library advisory board, to remove the requirement of ex officio members and to require quarterly meetings containing a cumulative clause, containing a savings and severability clause, and providing other matters relating to this subject. And again, council, this is the second reading of this ordinance, there have been no changes. Uh, unless there's any questions from the audience or council, I would entertain a motion so to moved. approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your hand. And it carries 5-0. Ordinance, uh, I mean, item number 3C is ordinance number 2017-11, amending the budget for fiscal year 2017 to authorize the transfer of a portion of the unassigned fund balance within the general fund to the general asset replacement fund uh, this is the second reading, and uh, just to reiterate, um, I did ask last meeting, uh, Ms. Yarbrough, this, uh, this 750000 that is we're being asked to amend the budget to transfer um, is in addition to the 886000 I believe it was, uh, that we approved in the budget for capital asset replacement in this fiscal year, and it will be for additional items, so just to jog your memory. Are there any questions from council? Any from the audience? If not, I would entertain a motion to approve on second reading. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your hand. Motion carries 5-0. Item number 4A is ordinance number 201712, amending chapter 74, parks and recreation of the code of ordinances of the city of Kerrville, Texas, by amending article two, parks and recreation advisory board, to increase the number of members from eight to nine and to clarify the responsibilities and expectations of the board containing a cumulative clause, containing a savings and severability clause, and providing other matters relating to the subject. Um, this is the first reading of this ordinance as a result of our discussion um, that we had concerning boards. Um, does anybody have any questions for Ms. Boyle? She, I believe, put it on the agenda. Uh, Mayor, let me add, if I could, okay. please, that uh, subsequent to your work session in February, uh, as we went forward with these modifications, staff met with Mr. Ferguson and Mr. Andrew and discussed this, these changes in, in this, this ordinance. Uh, they are the two council persons who are responsible for the recruiting and interviewing of, the, of this particular board. And... <clears throat> As a result of those meetings and is uh, outlined in your agenda bill, there, 
about uh, five or six major changes in this ordinance. Uh, one being to go to a quarterly meeting rather than monthly. And we're recommending that the board number be increased from eight to nine. Mm -hmm. uh, we're recommending that we remove the council member ex officio position, uh, revise the duties and powers to reflect the needs of the department. And kind of in summary, we identified or, or defined those needs to be an improvement in our marketing and also the recruiting of, of volunteers for the various uh, activities and events that the uh, Parks Department uh, uh, sponsors. Um, and then the last thing we set forth in this ordinance, some expectations of the board members, which uh, we feel like is uh, yep. needed and uh, are, are kind of identifies to those board members uh, uh, what we expect of them. Would you share that list of five? That's in your summary statement. Yeah, but it's a lot of the audience doesn't know what oh, that list okay. is. Do, oh, go over it again. He well, read it. just read the five expectations, okay. or, or I will. Oh, oh, you're talking about the expectations. Yeah, oh. I'm sorry. Board members yeah. are expected. Okay. Board, well, you want me to read? It? Up to you. Okay, I'll read. It. <laughs> Section seventy-four thirty-nine. Yeah, a ten one. Attend meetings on a regular basis and be an active user, participant, or attendee of the city parks, recreational areas, and or facilities. Two, advocate for the parks and recreation department. Three, assist with the marketing of activities of the parks and recreation department, including special events, programs, and the usage of the city's parks, recreational areas, and facilities. Four, assist in planning, marketing, and or volunteering with the various activities, special events, and programs. And five is assist the Parks and Recreation Department with recruitment of volunteers. So and, I, and I was going to ask if that came from the Parks Board, or from, but it came from you too? No. No? No. no. That didn't. Oh. It, it, well, it, it came from the working group. Yeah. The Parks Board. And yeah, the Parks Board okay. and those of us that helped out. This is a little bit of a different uh, approach to our board, uh, uh, creation of our boards, and I think it's uh, I think it's very worthwhile and something you may want to consider as you move forward. And this should help the volunteers understand exactly what their role is and what we expect of them. Yeah, that was good because I went to the Cajun Festival and there weren't any parks board members or. Yeah. Or council members or anything. So oh, wait, it, it, I was there. I was oh, there, were you there earlier when you were apparently. Okay. Yeah, I was there also. We had the VIP deal, but it was cold, <laughs> I know, and it was a very nice thing, and it was very entertaining. But it was warmer under the tent <laughs> well, from four to six. It was a very nice VIP tent. I got mm -hmm. to go through it before Melissa was there and let me even sample the food. Yeah, it was good. But at four o'clock, I had to be a train. Okay, um, that was my only question. The only other thing that I would ask, um, other, I think everything we discussed at the workshop except for the, these added expectations, but since we have um, voted or, or uh, approved no ex officio members, I would just ask that um, we would be updated on um, regularly uh, an attendance record maybe, Ms. Craig? We won't have any way to know unless if we're not there. Sure. Didn't it, doesn't it, our policy say we're supposed to get an uh, annual report of not a biannual? Yeah. yeah, I think there's supposed to be a, a certain frequency of reports on all the We did it at the workshop, yeah. 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 yeah, I think that's the way. It, it's set up that way already. Okay. Right. Yeah. Maybe quarterly, so yeah. we'll know, you know, because that's part of what we're supposed to look at for a board. Okay, any questions or comments by, I don't have any speaker request forms. Council, any others? No? I move approve. Okay. Second. We have a motion and a second on first reading of ordinance number 2017-12. All in favor, please raise your hand. Carries five to zero. Thank you. Um, item number 5A is application to City of Kerrville for Texas uh, Economic Improvement Corporation for funding to renovate the Dole Community Center. I would like, uh, before we begin, uh, to ask for a point of order on this for council. Um, I spoke with um, the city manager about this, and I spoke with Reverend Noah about this. Uh, and the point of order is that we have a procedural uh, policy 
for economic development process online. Uh, it establishes the guidelines and procedures for how we apply um, for funding from EIC. And uh, actually, in these guidelines, the order in which we should approach this would be first to present the funding, which is a very worthy cause, to EIC. They're not asking for a 380 agreement or any decision by council here. So uh, actually, I, I would ask for not um, a deferral, but a referral on this to EIC. I think according to our procedural policies and our economic development process and guidelines and procedures, this is really the way that it should go. And then once they review it, of course, you know the process would be to bring it back to council. And uh, Mr. Davis uh, agreed that that's what our procedural rules uh, allow for. So I would move in a so point you of... Would, oh, go ahead, yeah, your yeah I would move on a part of order that because of our policy for rules and procedures that we refer this particular agenda item to EIC and then once they consider and present it'll come back to council if it's approved and I believe at that point Mr. Hayes we have a public hearing that would be required if it's approved. You don't. EIC would, okay. And we haven't announced or anything for that, so. But, if, I'm, and, and I, I'm, I'm not sure where the conflict comes here because, you know, Mr. Pratt or whoever in the audience asked for an item to be put on, we have a conflict by saying if you go through, if you, if you do request it within a certain time frame, it will be put on. So I, you know, I, I agree this is a worthy project, but I, I want to make sure we're not stepping on our own policy that we, people yeah. get a request in in time yeah. and they do it in a timely manner but is actually, there some sort of a clarification I mean should I mean I yeah. maybe from one board's policy says he shouldn't do it but the other one says he should and can well actually it, I understand what you're saying mr. fine but if you go to rule 3.3 .3, and this is not in the charter it's in the procedural rules that we just uh, approved not long ago but if I provided you a copy each one of you but rule 3.3 .3, there is an agenda deadline and um, it says once it's placed on the agenda, um, let's see, it has to be by five o'clock on the sixth day preceding. And in item 3.4, it says um, each request to include or exclude an agenda item shall be forwarded to all members of the council at the time the request is submitted to the city secretary. Uh, so there's two things there. There was a, a deadline on 3.3 and there was a, a, a requirement to submit it um, to council members in Rule 3.4. Uh, and, and again, I discussed this with Reverend Noah, who actually is a, a friend of mine. I uh, was invited to speak at the Heritage Banquet, and we got to know one another. So this doesn't have anything to do with the project at all. This is strictly a procedural thing. Uh, we're going to have to do this all over again, and we would circumvent the process is why I'm making the motion to refer it to EIC. Mayor, this I, is I raised a point of order. If you could approach, please. Sure. Jack Pratt, 105 Deerwood. This was timely filed with the city. It was filed last Tuesday. Uh, so we're in the time frame. Well, and it wasn't forwarded to all members of the council at the time the request was submitted. And that's rule 3.4. Uh, so I, I don't want to be in violation of our own procedural rules. I don't want to be in violation of our stated economic development process guidelines and procedures. Uh, if council wants to go ahead anyway, I'm just advising that we would be violating our own policies. You know, back in April of 2014, April 22nd, 2014, there was a similar discussion and actually it was Mayor Pratt and, and Mr. Parton who had an objection to circumventing the process and it was when Gateway came. And they actually were a little different because they were asking for a 380 agreement. But the objection at that time, and there was no motion made because of that, was that the process was circumvented. And that's all I'm asking is that we abide by the stated process on our own website that everybody else um, follows. On 3.4, whose responsibility is it to get it to each council member? Well, it says if it's submitted to the city secretary, I'll always either the manager is who uh, supplies everything to us, the city manager. Well, it sounds like we're going to break a rule, which no matter which way we go. Well, I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't see why. We're, 
the application is not uh, in in the packet. The application has not been completed, so we don't have a. That's a point. I think yeah. it's worth making. It's yeah, I agree. It's a good point. No, I'm not arguing the point. The recommendation, the motion, the, the person is asking for is for the city to apply to EIC, and and of course the city has sometimes applied for EIC money. I think not usually in this type of thing. No, that's right. Um, we did. I think you and I are going to come to the same conclusion, but I, I'm a little hesitant to uh, have a citizen go through what he thought was the rules, the process, and through no fault of his own, show up here to speak and not get to even speak. Well, uh, he was uh, advised by Mr. Davis that it goes through EIC, and he's the mayor that approved this procedure. Well, I know, well, I know, <laughs> but see, he's not exactly asking us. I mean, he's asking us to apply to EIC. Okay, then let's cover that, Ms. Summerlin. That's a little different than applying. It would be, you're right. But, but in looking at that, uh, there were instances where the city was a co-applicant, and I explained this to Reverend Noah as well. He's asking for EIC funding for a 501c3, which, which they are, and a very worthy cause. Um, but the, the co-applicant situation evolved when the Callows were giving land to the city. So it was our land. We were going to own the athletic complex. Exactly. So think, we had I to be. you and I are going to come up yeah. with the same thing. Well, I'm just explaining so that we're not treading on any toes. We're doing it exactly by the book. And so that's what I'm saying. The co-applicant situation is if the city would have ownership or involvement. This is, this is being asked uh, straight to the 501c3, which they're allowed to do, and uh, I think are in the process of, of doing, completing the point, application. A point of order. First, we have a motion on the table. Let's, uh, we we, need, we have, don't have a second, so we really can't even be talking about okay. it. So, so we need to I'm solve that why. issue. What? Yeah. Well, we went way past why. We're so discussing. let's deal with that issue, then let's decide what we're going to do. Okay. There is a motion that we simply refer this according to our policy to EIC, and then upon their approval it would return to City Council. Is there a second, Ms. Summerlin? No. Okay. Nobody? No, ma'am. I stated my case. Before we start. I think we're all going to, most of us, from what I hear, kind of hear Mary Ellen hinting at, where I know you, yep. I think Jack can make his case. I will tell you up front, my recommendation is that we ask that the coordination be done between him and the chief and the, the organization and come back to go to the EIC and come to us. But the fact that he's asked to come and talk, met the criteria, he deserves the right to talk. I would ask for a vote, a motion by council to hear the presentation. Is that your motion? We don't need a vote. I don't need a motion. It's on the, it's on the agenda. It's on mm -hmm. the agenda. Okay. Yeah. Well, actually, the motion to not hear it. If there is, well, okay, if yeah. there's an objection, it's usually by consensus of council. And obviously, this is a consensus. So, Mr. Pratt, do you want to make your presentation? Sure. Good evening, council. A little history on what uh, we've been working on. The background is that Doyle Community Center, or the Doyle School, uh, was the public school for black students in Kerrville way back prior to 1963. And the school had students from the uh, first through the 12th grade. <clears throat> Doyle closed in the fall of 1963. Many of the most educated people in our community were dispersed and local programs surrounding students and enlightening the community ceased at that point. <clears throat> it was the hope of the community that some of that community spark could be reignited through a community center, thus the beginning of the Doyle Community Center. So in August 2003, the Doyle Community Center opened its doors for the first time in 40 years long time. So let's come up to present day. <clears throat> the Doyle School Community Center is a 501c3 nonprofit corporation organized in the state of Texas. <clears throat> the center is completely funded by contributions from individuals, from businesses, organizations, nonprofits, and so forth. 
It is used for our neighborhood and family events, after school programs, senior citizen services, after school meals for our children, food pantry, and local service resources as in off, uh, offices. Now our challenges at the Doyle Community Center, the, phys the facility's physical conditions are in dire need of repair. There's a lot of things that cannot be accomplished in the facility because the facility is not up to code. <clears throat> These have occurred over time due to the lack of needed funds. Uh, and I'll even add to neglect of that part of our community. Uh, conditions have caused some programs to relocate elsewhere. Other programs have been diminished and prevented <coughs> other programs from getting started. So what are the immediate needs of Doyle Community Center today? To renovate the Doyle Community Center in a manner that brings the facility up to city codes, <coughs> makes it fully functional to meet community needs, provides opportunities for growth in the community, personal improvement, community development, education for all of Kerrville, and focuses in particular on the low-income neighborhoods around the center. Additional use after renovation, whether we like to admit it or not, we have a serious drug problem in our community. And we can't be in denial of that. The renovation would include an office at the Doyle Community Center that could be used by the Kerrville Police Department where officers go to complete their paperwork rather than go down to the police station. Then that would provide visibility of police cars in the community rather than behind a police station. And that would help in the deterrent in some, in some, in some cases. We have been working on this project for almost two years. Uh, about a year and a half ago, we met with uh, Chief Knight, and he agreed that it would be good to have a police to, an office down there for the police officers to go and complete their per paperwork after they have completed an incident where they have to make their reports, rather than go down to the police station and not be visible in the community. So this makes Kerrville Police Department more visible in the neighborhood which could be a crime deterrent. Now let's talk about cost. <clears throat> the minimum amount of work needed to accomplish to bring the building into compliance with electrical and fire codes provides an energy, that provides an energy efficient and functional facility is about a quarter of a million dollars. Convert the current storage copy room into a new women's restroom and bring the existing men's restroom up to ADA standards. That's about $55,000. The existing outdoor pavilion, including the basketball court, does not currently have lighting. It needs to install conduit, wiring, switching, and heavy duty outdoor lighting, and that's in the neighborhood of around $18,000. To bring the entire facility into ADA compliance and provide new architectural finishes, this package of work, in addition to what is outlined above, would provide the Doyle School with a completely renovated interior space. That's about $147,000. Now, this does not include asbestos abatement, lead paint removal, fire sprinkler system, or architectural design fees, and they're not included. <clears throat> but I think I've got in my numbers that I'm presenting here, there's about $15,000 available for a fire sprinkler system. These are only estimates. Actual costs can only be determined in the bid process. So our recommendation to council is to apply to the city, the Kerrville Economic Improvement Corporation for renovation funding in the amount of $600,000. This can be a city project where a city would apply to city to the Economic Improvement Corporation, or you can apply, in the, or we can go to the EIC and do it that way. It can be done in either way. Mr. Pratt, are you a, a member of the Board of Directors? But 
uh, I've been working on this project for about two years. And our Doyle Community Board of Directors are listed here. You have those in front of you. Thank you. It's my understanding that the that the uh, working with the board on this. That the board of directors has, has actually been working on its own application to the EIC. They it's have for quite some time, different. but these all of this work is from the work that the board has done. Uh, this is not the board's presentation, excuse me, Mayor Council. Um, we're currently in the process of trying to get our updated numbers. We met with the city to understand the application process for EIC. We right now are waiting for the updated scope of work that uh, we've described to Peter Lewis and uh, getting some updated numbers. The late the most recent numbers we have on the Coster project come from a 2009 estimate. And, not, and these figures that I presented are updated from that estimate. As a general comment, my preferred approach, first let me, let me be clear, I, uh, the Doyle community is one that which we as a community certainly need to take more interest funding and I know this has been a passion of yours Jack for a long time we've talked about it numerous times I'm very passionate about it also and at times embarrassed about we that's the global we have not taken care of the infrastructure etc for that community Having said that, I admire the Doyle Community Board. I admire what you were doing here. My preferred approach would be for the Doyle Community, and with you doing whatever you can help them, whatever, you know, would be to go to the EIC and bring it back to us through that route. Uh, it just seems to me to be consistent with who we are and their autonomy it says absolutely nothing about my adamant support. If I had to vote tonight, would find the money. But that's not my that it's not it's not that point at all, Jack. I hope you hear oh, that. I, I understand. It's, I just it, want to make you uh, very clear that for the last two years, been working with the board right. on this issue. This is not me coming as me. I understand. I'm just saying I would like to see the board take it to the EIC. That's my recommendation, and I can't you know, but. So I, I'm not anxious to make a motion tonight to go for us to go to the board. I'd rather see the board go to the EIC and the EIC and the board come to the council after a public hearing that they would hold and when we, then this council embrace or choose to modify or not embrace. It says absolute. I'm willing, I'm willing to, to make that motion in fact because it seems to me that for the city to sponsor the application somehow suggests that the city's an owner. And, and I, make it clear to me, you're not you're not in any way suggesting I'm not suggesting that the only board. thing I'm really suggesting from this the city to the is to waive all the fees. Board. This belongs to the five oh one C three board, right? right? Mm -hmm. That's right. And 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 they should apply. I think you said and we'll be yeah. I think uh, enthusiastically receptive. But that's how it needs to yeah. be done. And and all I'm asking for the city is to waive all the fees as a partner in this project. Oh, that's what you mean by being a sponsor? Yeah. Well, that's, that what does the fees amount to? Well, you have all of your permit it's, fees. It'd be significant. But, that, but we can make oh, but that. That's part of the application process. Yeah. Process. And again, that's I think that's a, that's a worthwhile thing to, to put, mm -hmm. put on our table that, to tell us about now. And I would, if, if, did you make a motion? Yes, she did. I'll second that motion we then. Okay. We have a motion and we have a second. All in favor, please raise your hand. Carries five to zero. Okay, good. Thanks, Jack. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Okay. 
item 5B is a resolution number 2017 amending the ethics policy for elected and appointed officials city of Kerrville as previously adopted by resolution number 40-2013 said amendments concerning the meeting preparation communications and the confidentiality of specific information. Um, Mr. Davis, did you want to recap what we're doing here? Yes, ma'am. Uh, again, this is an outgrowth of the work session we had in uh, February where the council uh, asked us to do some amending to our meeting rules as well as to the ethic, ethics rules. Uh, we brought this to you at the last council meeting to, again, share our recommendations with you and seek some direction from you. And, again, you told us to go back and put these four items into the uh, Code of Ethics, which we have done. To just review the four items, they are the council to submit questions to staff prior to meetings, to allow time to research, and this would make the meetings more efficient. The staff provides information, conversations, emails, etc. to the council. Such should be considered privileged information until city council takes action on the subject. It is inappropriate to provide such information to citizens or the media. Three, a council member quotes, if a council member quotes a document or receives information on an agenda item, they should provide a copy of the document slash information to all council members prior to the meeting. And four, and finally, council attendance at board meetings should be avoided. Uh, Mr. Hayes has eloquently drafted uh, these four items into the appropriate language, and you will find them in your agenda packet, and they are, uh, I'm say red lines are actually blue, uh, those, those four recommendations. Are you ready for discussion? Ready for comments? Yes. Uh, on on uh, letter O on page four uh, about not attending board meetings. I kind of, the more I've gone back and read that, I, I do have a problem with it because I think there will be times and there are times when members of council, councils will have items prob possibly even coming up to PNZ where you have to attend and saying we should not attend period and I think going to some of the going going to the board meetings and just listening and not actually participating I think that's I I, I have a hard time just saying we can't go to any board meeting ever I think that's what and I, I said and last I, time. I and I understand you know where, where, where it's coming from but at the same time there are times when we need to be there I mean we may have an issue before that board as an individual as an individual not as a council member uh, and but isn't I, what we're saying here mayor pro tem that we shouldn't go and express if it's not a part like property you might have right if it's not that we shouldn't be going and saying we want the pnz to take this direction even though the council as a whole has another direction that's where i thought this was really intended okay so you so okay so speaking now that for you, wording may need to be cleaned up so speaking for yourself personally is okay but just don't go speak on behalf of council is what you're saying yeah i think you have to be you don't give up your citizenship rights to <laughs> but it's yeah. more but in the sense of you're listening you're listening you're listening right yeah and because if you start talking you talk as a council person are. right you can't say i'm not talking as a council member now i'm just a citizen mm -mm. That doesn't that doesn't work. I wondered. I re this is the tenor of the conversation that I remember yeah. when we had it in February, right. and I wondered, yeah. Mr. Hayes could tell us why. What what makes you make it so strictly? He may have just don't. In particular, you that was what we wanted you to do, or there's some other thoughts you've had. In, in, in particular, word, yes. due process. Uh, okay. In, in Let particular. Me, okay. Um, yes, you know, I went back, I think y'all have discussed this going back even into November, and so I cobbled together my notes from roughly three, four meetings, and I just, you know, one, try to create something that 
captures your intent and then it's clear and understandable. Um, the, the issue of due process really comes with respect to um, PNZ and ZBA. So in other words, and this goes, I think, to what you all were just talking about. If you all go to one of those boards and unduly influence the process there, such that someone could say, well, it went to PNZ, um, a council member was there, a council member spoke, that council member really influenced PNZ, they voted the way the council member wanted to go, and then it goes to, to council and that council member is there again, you could get an argument that that violates due process. That's and what that's we do why in EIC. I, that's what we do in EIC, the council But that's votes. allowed by state law. There's nothing in state law that says you all can be a member of PNZ, and that's the difference. We're just, you know, I expressed last time, and I won't uh, hound on it, but I just, it seems like more and more we're restricting ourselves to represent the people. You know, we're to be the eyes and ears of the people, and the way to do that, because oftentimes the minutes aren't posted online for months and months, sometimes years, in some of these boards, not our meetings, they're timely done, but in some of these boards, I went back and we didn't have uh, Main Street for over a year, maybe two. So I don't have any way, they're not recorded, to know what conversation went on in those meetings. Uh, I, I don't see any harm in a council member attending David Lipscomb's library meeting to see what they're doing if we have an interest in a particular project. Um, and these boards are appointed by us. They have no uh, legislative authority. They're advisory. Uh, that's just my feeling. I, I feel like we're separating ourselves more and more from what the people ask us to do i.e. be their eyes and ears. Well, I guess that's why I was asking for a little more clarification on it, because I think there are yeah. times when we have to be there, even if it's for, yeah. for a personal yeah. issue. And, uh, it, and, and this would be basically saying we couldn't go represent ourselves if someone was building something next door to you and there was a public hearing, you couldn't go speak according to this. Yeah. So there, what I'm saying is there are times when we can, and, and, and maybe with the advisory boards, this, that, that would apply. Like you said, they don't have any authority anyway. They're there strictly yeah. for advisory purposes. That's right. But, um, well, and but, but some of P and Z did. does have authority. Yes, they do. And EIC does have authority. But and I think that's what Mr. Hayes is saying with regards to the due process, that someone may feel like they're ZBA. Due, due, ZBA, ZBA, yeah, some of those. Building codes. Yeah, yeah. But, but like parks and recreation, some of us have been asked to be the liaison to see what goes on there and come back and report periodically. So that's what we decided not to have But we have won't anymore. have that. Not to no, have any we, more No, liaisons. you said we decided to have no ex officios. Right. It didn't say anything about the liaison. It's the same thing in the definition. We covered yeah. it mm. with Mr. Hayes. Oh, yeah, good. that's what we did at the, at that work group. Okay. Was the idea that there was it's not to be a regular attendance by city council members okay. at any of these boards and, con, and okay. mm -hmm. commissions. It, it, it seems to me that we're... Well, first is I think we... You've got to have your personal. If you've got property or something involved, that's fine. You, that sure. we have, you have and we can figure out how to make that work. But I think we're attack, We're addressing the wrong, solving the wrong, the problem wrongly. If we don't feel like we know what's going on, then let's fix that problem. Because, and there go, let's demand that the staff through the city manager whoever that is related to what X, Y, or Z board, if they're not getting data out quick enough, if they're not publishing what they're doing, if they're not making regular reports that we ask for, that's a solvable problem. Yeah. And that's a solvable problem through the city staff. Uh, in item number I, one, to see if we understand this, it's on the page three. This is about confidentiality, and I think it could get pretty sticky here. Um, in the course of performing official duties, city officials may and city council will be privy to confidential information, defined as any information that the city official is notified is confidential at the time it is shared with the member, or that a reasonable person would understand to be confidential from the totality of the circumstances surrounding how the member is made aware of the information. Can anybody define that, explain that to me? A reasonable person that you should know that it's confidential. You see, we're not putting this in procedure. We're putting this in the ethics policy. 
So it's going to be subject to interpretation by who, whomever is on council at the time. Um, I talked with a commissioner who said they thought a lot of this policy was uh, absolutely a violation of our right to free speech. Uh, I understand confidentiality, certainly with legal issues, uh, and that disclaimer is always on anything that Mr. Hayes sends us. But other things, um, how, are we gonna, how are you going to enforce something like that? Well, I think it's aspirational. But it gives one council member a, a reference to address an, another council member and say, we had a meeting about this this morning, this afternoon, the San Antonio Express News called me for a comment. What'd you call Zeke for? You know? No, I don't That know. sort of situation. Well, this gives me, as a council member, some basis to say to another council member, I think that behavior was unethical. Please don't do that anymore. So it's entirely subjective. So anyway, that well, was my you, comment. That's the point you've made about yeah. this whole policy more yes. than once. Of course it is. Yes. Of course it's aspirational. It, and, it uh, is aspirational. It's, I mean, is it plagiarism to have the... Um, I'm for taking that out, too. The rotary pool. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's fine. The rotary test is fine for the rotary organization, but I think it's a little bit plagiarism okay, for us. That's on page six. Well, it's not plagiarism, but it may not be appropriate. But it it's, not, it's not a bad thing to do to, to suggest it's something. It's not bad. It's a pretty good set of words. I'm going to suggest that we amend that out. Those are good questions to ask yourself before you with go all ahead. With all respect to Rosie, I move <laughs> that we amend the statement of commitment to eliminate the four-way test and its bullet. Okay. <laughs> That's a motion to amend. Nobody else likes it? Well... Is that the only motion? Uh, did well, I think we got to do them one at a time, don't you? We'll be crazy. Well, we can make a list, and if everybody agrees, I don't know how you're going to fix. I think we decided you could fix O by just staff. Um, well, let's I, let's let's do it one mm -hmm. by one. Let's okay. make some suggestions, and then that'll give Mike some real guidance. Okay. So. So I move that we eliminate the last bullet on the state of commitment and the four-way test. So bef the before speaking or acting, I will... Right. Just leave that out. Okay. I understand that. And I, I was going to say, I, I second your motion to take that out. Oh, thank that's what you. you're looking thank for. You. Do, you, well, <laughs> do you want to change O at all? Or just no, I think she's saying we're going to take them one at a time. Let's just, let's just do this one and then go and do O and then go and do O. <coughs> well, we can do that with a consensus. Question. Yes. Right. Yes, ma'am. And the four questions. Yes. So we can do that by a consensus. Is that fine with everyone? Okay. Okay. So that's step so one. Have a on the floor but you do have a motion. Please. Well, can you do a motion on just one part of a resolution? Sure, it's an amendment. Absolutely. Okay. Will that? Will there be room for a second? If there's another, uh, for a second amendment? Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah, you can have half a dozen. Okay. There's a motion and a second on the floor to amend the four-way test. To remove it. To remove, to remove it. it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All in favor, raise your hand. Okay. Passes five zero. Mayor, I meant to say this before we got started. I want to make a clear point. Regarding the consideration of these ethics rules and additions, let me be abundantly clear and not very delicate. If the rather, in my perception, draconian and threatening letter related to this topic, which was sent to the city manager by one Mr. Robert White, was intended to intimidate me or any of the city council, let me be clear. I am not intimidated one iota. In fact, this emboldens me and makes me even more resolute that these and additional ethics rules need to, are mandatory. Are you uh, adding, uh, adding something to the amendments? No, ma'am. I'm just saying okay. that's my going in I position. I don't know what you're referring to, but let's stick to the topic. If there's it's a specific It's clearly to thing. the topic because the letter was sent, and it's totally on topic. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> well. So anyway, if it's an addition to I the do. ethics policy, we will. Um, 
I think that's going to be very difficult in I, number one, to ascertain what a reasonable person would understand to be confidential. I would like to strike that part. Um, if it's noted by a city official that it's confidential at, as it, at the time that it's shared, I think that's appropriate. But when you say, or that a reasonable person would understand to be confidential, from the totality of the circumstances surrounding how the member is made aware, I, I just think that's too hard to interpret. You know, I don't at all. I remember a discussion of, in an accusation in a long TV diatribe where people were indicting a presidential candidate because she should have known that that was confidential information and it wasn't so marked. And a reasonable person was said in the same test, a reasonable person should know. We know we're told something to keep our mouth shut. And it's not something we're going to take anybody to jail for. It's not a legal issue. It's simply a reminder, like, the, like Mary Ellen said. And I think it's a great comment, and I support leaving it in. Any discussion by other council members? You said a second? No, you, we're not I don't have to do anything if you want to leave it in. Okay, we have to do a thing. Well, could we go back to O then and talk about this attendance at board meetings and try to make that a little clearer? Mm -hmm. What if we just stuck? Can I interrupt a minute? Sure. Uh, ask a favor? Sure. Would y'all either work from front to back or back to front? That's a really <laughs> good point. So that we can keep notes and try to follow you. I don't right. think anything else has been brought up except this. I don't have anything to suggest until page four, number O. And I just have a, just a suggestion. Would it help to put the word regularly in there? City council should not regularly attend meetings of boards or ordinarily, something like that, that modifies it just a little bit. Does that get us where we want to go? or? Does it need more? Or, and, and maybe add some language about, or for reasons of a personal nature that, you know, like for ownership or uh, you've been notified that something is happening close to your property where you, you have a legal right to be there. Mm -hmm. Because there's been, um, it's been several times we've had members have had to recuse themselves, but they right. but they could have gone to P and Z and listened to it, and you, we we didn't have to recuse ourselves from there. It would have been good to hear it, um, it and it, it, I don't think that's you know necessarily been an issue yet. But um, so. I, I do move for approval of item F and item H, though, since we don't seem to be discussing those. <laughs> well, going back again. You? We'll vote for the whole thing. And vote for the whole thing. Okay, I thought, okay. We, were doing, I thought we were doing it piecemeal. Okay. It's similar to the campus. Well, I think ordinarily or regularly would improve that. If it says what are we trying to achieve? We're saying for people who have personal business there, or they're involved in personal business, is that what I understand you saying, Stephen? Yeah, I need to rescind my motion also, so. Um. Okay. Is it only in cases, Stephen, where you have a, a, a personal, a, 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 where you're there in, the, in your character as a citizen, like at PNZ and something bad is going in next door to your house? Yeah, I think you should be allowed to be there yeah. for something along the sure. Is that the only nature? kind of case that you, that you, want to make room for I think or is it more along the line that you'd like to be able to drop in and listen sometimes i think it would be beneficial to drop in and listen at times yeah. uh, i don't think we should be interacting with the process i don't think that's my place to interact we appoint those people to make those decisions that's why we appoint them mm -hmm. and we shouldn't be attempting to influence that on any level because we want five independent minds making those decisions so what are you saying and, and so i'm i'm saying is I, I, I have a, 
I guess uh, going back and looking at this, I have a tough time saying we cannot go to any board it's ever. Too, I think legitimate. you're going to run into a legal issue. If, if it was ever challenged absolute. on your right to freedom of assembly, it would lose. That's all I'm saying. I mean, we can have an understanding. Uh, we have a complaint procedure, you know, within the charter. If a, a, a council member is doing something, you know, out of the ordinary that's impeding the work of the city government, then we have a process for that. If we try to define all these little things, I think you're going to run into a legal issue. I'm just sorry, but we have constitutional rights that supersede some of these policies. That, and I don't believe we should be lobbying individual members of any of the boards. I think and, that's, and, that's and our policy yeah. states that. I, I know, mm -hmm. and I'm just saying I'm, I'm. That's where I see where some of this is coming from. Right. And uh, as long as we're sticking to those policies, that's great. But I, I. I I said, the more I've read this, and I just, there's too many times where yeah. there's things I, I'd like to go listen to, but I just sit in the back corner, and I mean, I, I, was, honestly, I don't, I don't even make my presence known. Right. And that's, that's and I, I just sit back that there. That seems to me yeah. harmless. Yeah. And that's I think not that undue we, influence. That's right. right. That's and right. I, and, I, and I don't know how. How to say it. How to say it. I Should don't we, think you this have doesn't to say, say anything. See if Mike can, um, say, can but, say it. Okay, because one of the things, I mean, being on a council, we lose rights anyway. <laughs> I mean, there's times we can't go do things. You know, yeah. if, if if you want rights taken away from the joint city council, yeah, well, that's when you started out. With. Because yeah, and because there are certain places we definitely can and cannot go. Uh, so. But I'm saying we've already said it doesn't hurt to go to an advisory board meeting. You know, we're not right. We're, we're not and making any decisions there. So, the only thing that you're really talking about is a a ZBA, which I don't think any council members probably ever attended and spoken at any anywhere, unless you are personally. Uh, involved. Uh, so I, I just don't see the need for any of that sentence right there. I think we're covered. It's not that we're not covered. I think we're covered under our charter and, and our procedural rules. We have board rules uh, and procedural rules for the city. I think we're covered there. I just don't think we need to. Where, where does it say that we should not be influencing um, boards and committees or lobbying their members? Mike read it to us out of when we went to the PNZ um, and I don't have it with me, but he read about the lobbying. You, you read to us about going to lobby applicants. Right. That, mm -hmm. that's, that applies, I believe, the boards and the I'm sure we have it with the city, too, then, because if we're... I don't, I don't think so. That was so specific to PNZ, as I recall, that we put that in for both PNZ and ZBA. There's their rules, which are allowed by, by the zoning code. Then again, it should be in our procedural rules, not our ethics policy. I move that we strike that sentence and add it to our procedural rules. Now, Isn't wait a minute. Uh, uh, do you, uh, <laughs> the last sentence. Okay, you're you're saying we take this this exact sentence and add that to our procedural rules as written? Is that what your motion well, is? Well, we'll have to come back. If we're going to amend the procedural rules, we can come back with something and we can have the language there. I'm just saying for this language in the ethics policy, I think that last sentence should be struck in O, and we can cover that with an amendment to the procedural rules, what? as we have for the board procedure. Mayor, could, mm -hmm. could I ask Mr. Hayes another question? Well, Mike, what made you put this in ethics rather than procedural rules? You, you know, that was kind of a, a quandary when we talked with staff. Um, you know, I, are, are we overlooking some cogent argument no. that would cause us to leave it in here? Good. And, and I was looking at your procedural rules. Um, there is a uh, Rule 75 Council Liaisons um, under uh, miscellaneous, and you can stick it in there. Okay. Cool. I'd be comfortable okay. with that. I'd we be have the consensus. Okay. okay. Do you want to make the motion? I'd be or you want me to? Well, yeah, I would move that we strike the last well, sentence. Of we're going to have an overall motion. Yeah. They said we can't piecemeal. Well, this is all just right. an amendment. This is just an amendment. Okay. All right. So we're going to amend this draft by striking the blue sentence in O. Okay. Right, Bonnie? Yes, ma'am. Second. You seconded it? I, I thought you made it, not okay. seconded it. That's right. We'll do it the <laughs> That's way. what Keep we did. It. Okay. Yeah. All in but, favor? What? I mean, did, are we directing we're them to put it We're actually doing it by consensus is what we've been doing. That's what we did before, yeah. and that's what I think we can do with O. And then at the end, 
We had motions on each on the other one. We had a motion and a vote. It's a motion to amend. Okay, we have a motion and to a amend. second to amend by eliminating that sentence. Yes, in item O. Oh. Oh. Clarification again, I guess, please. Is is this or is your intent then to strike it from here and add it that to the, question. You yes, the rules? Yes. That'll come next. Then I would recommend that oh, do it be a part of time. the motion. Okay, so. Okay it's fine. Yes, we can okay amend the motion. That's, that's part of the motion. That. Okay. If that's Thank appropriate. You. I'm Thank comfortable. Thank you. I'm comfortable with that. Yep. Okay. Yes. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Now we know what it is. All in favor, please <laughs> raise your hand. Okay. Carries 5 0. Thank you. Now, are we with that one change? Two changes. Two changes so far. I'm we sorry. took out the, the four point Before rule we, we took out and the last sentence of O. So now we're ready for it to, to approve the whole thing. Tell me again, what's the other one we changed? The four-way test at the end. The four-way test on page six. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I thought you said four point something. I kept no, pushing no, for no, the no. four point <coughs> I make a motion we approve the modified. Uh, can we add, I would like to amend by an additional, by adding oh. uh, another item. Um, and it just came up recently, so I'd like council to consider your thoughts about this. But I would like to add, um, it would be, what, J-L-O-P-Q-R, I guess, item. Um, and I don't know how you would phrase it, but uh, something about, Mr. Fine and I had a discussion about this, but that there should be no discussions with staff or other council members about how a future vote may result or how an elected election or an appointment could affect the outcome of an issue. And this is a discussion we've been having back and forth, but to me, it's improper for us to discuss as council members with a staff member how we think a future vote would go. I mean, that should be decided when we deliberate and make a motion. Well, that would basically mean with any discussion that we couldn't talk to another member of council about anything because any discussion having to do with that item would affect or could affect the vote. No, this and the is the same thing with staff. I'm not expressing it then right. What I'm saying is that there should be no discussions with staff or other council members in particular about how we think a future vote might go. That's not a good way to say it. Uh, or how an election or an appointment could affect the outcome of a particular issue, which has to do with a vote. I mean, I think what the purpose of council is is to deliberate, and then we make our decision, and then we vote. But I think it's, in my mind, it's improper to say, well, if so-and-so gets elected, I think this is what the vote's going to be. Or if so-and-so is appointed, I think it's going to be a 3-2 or something like that. I think that's very inappropriate to discuss how we think the balance of a vote is going to go. Well, counts. I think there's discussions all the time with staff. You know, and our, let's say a program is brought up, and you go, well, I don't think council would go for that. I mean, that, that would be part of every discussion, you know, if, if I called Glenn on one of these items and wanted to talk to him about it, and, you know, that would, I'm basically looking to see what, what he thinks, how he feels. So to say we can't talk to a staff member or a council member or, you know, anybody else about it, I don't see where that is. I don't have is. any problem with a citizen, but to I, me, I I've never had a discussion when I met with Mr. Davis or Mr. Hobby. Uh, about how I thought if we do this, I think so and so is going to say this and so and so is going to say that. I've never done that ever. I never would. I've never why done would it. you think that? Why, why would you think that would be bad? Um, because you're predicting. In essence, what you're doing is sort of having a walking quorum. You're predicting what their opinion is going to be about but a particular thing. have to do with the members. That wouldn't be a I walking mean, quorum. That, that's, 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 that's what I'm quorum. Quorum. That's not even close. Very illegal. Well, I know, but you see yeah. what I'm saying? By inference, if I have a meeting with Mr. Davis and I say on a particular issue, well, I think Ms. Summerlin is going to vote against it and Mr. Ferguson is going to vote against it, or the other way around, um, to me that's inappropriate. I mean, I think that's something that we determine when we get to council. Well, it ultimately will be determined when you get mm -hmm. to council, but to have a discussion, there's, what's wrong with discussing something? Mm -hmm. I mean, that, I don't see anything wrong at all with discussing them. I mean, if, if, if you think the thing is going to get shot down, just your gut feeling, why would you bring even it bring up. it to council? Well, and, I mean, and think about what could happen. We bring something up, it fails, and we want to bring it back up. And I say, wow, Mr. 
Davis, you know, Councilman X voted against it and had this thing. Now, if we modify this, we could we could probably bring that to a winning vote. Well, that's a result of a discussion. I mean, that's that's different. That's the that's same thing. That's the same thing. What you're saying. I guess what I'm trying to um, what I'm trying to avoid is, you know, what we've discussed too about. Uh, the conversation I overheard in the conference room about a particular council member saying, this is how we're going to get around Bonnie. And that's, to me, inappropriate. Well, the only unethical thing about that entire event that you say happened is you're eavesdropping in on a conversation. I mean, you purposefully <laughs> eavesdropped on it. Well, and, Which and you admitted. we're not discussing that. Uh, when oh, no. You, well, of course we're not. But. When, when you're standing in, outside of an open door and you overhear something, that's not uh, intentional. So Black's Law saying, Dictionary says eavesdropping is secretly listening to the private conversations of others without their consent. This is commonly thought to be unethical. Well, what is unethical is it's having a, a conversation that you say happened that Mr. Hoppy doesn't remember it happening, and neither does Mr. Parton. We had a we're talking about what we want to add to it, and I'm trying to get to a place, a something, a statement that we can say. Make a motion. Okay. If you have a motion in language, then make uh, it. Obviously, it's not going to go anywhere. So. Well, you can't say that. You just that's against the motion. That's you against just the motion made. you're about to make. That yeah. was just the point you and just made. And you did. You did in front of all of us. I'm so. not doing it in secret. <laughs> well. Okay. Are there any more discussions on the ethics policy? Move <laughs> approval as modified. Okay. We second. have a motion second. and we have a second. All in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed, motion carries four to one. <laughs> Item number six is budget and economic update. Good evening, Count, uh, Mayor and Council. This is the budget up update as of March the 31st. <clears throat> In the general fund, the revenue for the month of March was $1,420,909, year-to-date of $19,391,011. <clears throat> the expenditures for the month of March from the general fund was $1,856,567, with our year-to-date expenditures of being $13,827,391. And again, it shows prior year to current year being high, and that's because of the budget amendment y'all did earlier in the year. So everything's on track otherwise. <clears throat> in the water sewer fund, the revenue for the month was 840843 with our year-to-date revenue of being 5550146 and our expenditures was 900813 with our year-to-date being 5636339 <clears throat> In the hotel motel fund, for the month of March, we had 74,402 in revenue, year-to-date of 504,508, and we had no expenditures in the month of March. Those are strong numbers, mm -hmm. revenue-wise. Yes, they are. Wise. In the next section, that's your community improvement plan that shows the status of the most current project, showing the project bud budget, the current month expenditures, the project to date expenditures, and the remaining balance of those projects. At the bottom is the development activities. We had four new residential permits issued in the month of March, and the commercial value of permits issued for new and remodeling was $6,644,950. The housing market is remaining level as it has several months. Our unemployment is steady and our utility accounts are growing slowly. Did you say March and the commercial was new? A new permit? The month of March we had four new residential permits. The commercial. The commercial was six million six hundred and forty four thousand nine hundred and fifty in the month of March. I just wondered if that was a new permit. Oh. oh. No, that's new and remodeled. Okay, that's yes, all together. Um, Ms. Schrober, where do we put in this reuse system project? What about the two million for the dirt? Is that is that not included as a part of the project? In the project, in the project here, in the expenditures, the transfer out. I have not done that as of March. That will show up in April. Okay, so when you actually do it, then it appears yes, as part of the project total. I yes, see. Yes, ma'am. 
Any other questions or remarks by council? By the I audience? thought the sales tax would probably settle down, but it just keeps. It, it's going. done real well. It's been real healthy. We've been pleasantly surprised. Very good. I mean, settle down, and I mean, I thought it would be more than three point yeah. four. Right. But I have, that's not complaint. It, it's kind of it's waving. Not a no, no, no. Yeah. Right. We're not complaining. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Thank Yerber. you. Thank you very much. Um, item visitors and the citizens and visitors forum. Um, Robert Naiman. Boy Scouts. Ruth <laughs> Scout Naiman. Give your name, address, and troop number. Robert Naiman, 1800 Glen Road. At the April 11th City Council member meeting, one council member opined on several projects Kerrville has embarked on in the last six years. Projects such as the River Trail Athletic Complex and Reuse Water Pond were mentioned. Said councilman appeared to indicate that individuals who questioned or opposed those projects were against progress. To question the cost and the design of the river trail is not being against progress. Destroying the beautiful soccer fields that have served Kerrville youth for 23 years to build new soccer fields is not progress. To ignore the work of hundreds of individuals who dedicated thousands of hours improving those fields is thoughtless. Building the athletic complex may prove to be a wise decision. However, I suspect that the income from field rentals will not cover the cost of maintenance interest expense in building an affluent transmission line to the complex. Raising questions about the financial viability of the athletic complex is not being against progress, but for financial responsibility. An accounting scheme to buy dirt from the water and sewer department to pay for the DBAT building is not progress. Building a reuse water pond without a cost-benefit analysis is not progress. I reviewed all 190 pages of the Reuse Water Ad Hoc Advisory Committee report twice and could not find such an analysis. Having a city manager state that any loan from KPUB for the Reuse Water Pond project would reduce the amount of money needed to be funded by the Economic Improvement Corporation then seek more funds from the EIC for the same pro project is not progress. Having $4 million in excess of the needed 25% reserve for the water sewer department while Kerrville continues borrowing money is not progress. Financing in excess of 60% of the city's budget from sales tax and water sewer revenues is not progress. I believe most world-class economists would call those sources of revenue a regressive tax on lower and middle income citizens. As exhibited in the April 11th council meeting, those who have little confidence in their beliefs tend to make pejorative comments toward people with whom they disagree. Thank you. And thanks to the Boy Scouts. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Boy Scouts. Uh, Carolyn Lipscomb. Carolyn Lipscomb, 909 Lake Drive. Uh, I was just coming here to see if it's possible that in the water bill or someplace the city could put out a reminder about dogs that are running loose. Uh, my husband and I walk our dogs and we also walk dogs for some friends who are un unable to walk theirs. And when you walk dogs restrained on a leash and you have dogs running loose, it really is hazardous. <laughs> and uh, this has really become more and more of a problem in the last few months. And in talking to other people that I know who also walk dogs, they're having some of the same issues. And Sunday night, two healers were loose and came after us. And so I moved toward them 
so David could take the dogs and go back. And I honestly believe that one of the dogs would have bitten me had a man driving down the street or coming down the street not stopped his car, gotten out. It was a young man he had on construction boots and he ran at the dogs and was kicking at them and they retreated. But anyway, I think Kerrville has an ordinance about keeping dogs up and maybe people just need a reminder. That's a good reminder. I had a, an incident like that on my street. I think we can not discuss it. It isn't on the agenda, you know, but no, we can answer a matter of fact, a question of fact, and the question is, can we do something? And I think Ms. Uh, Caitlin, Ms. Berry can put out a press release. That would be the answer to your question. Okay. Um, uh, or, well, or, or in we the can, water bill or, or something. Can. But yes, ma'am. Anyway. Well, I'm glad you're okay. Uh, no. Um, David was the one who got tangled up in leashes when one of the dogs <laughs> came and ended up on the street. <laughs> so, well, thank you very much for mentioning. That's a good point. Who, That's, um, Mayor, yes. may I just ask the manager, who, who's, how do we enforce the loose dog ordinance? Well, we've got two or three dog catcher. different ways kind of depending upon the time of day and day of week. Um, we have a code enforcement officer and they can do some enforcement. Unfortunately, we don't have the facilities or equipment. Overnight to because the county does that, right? Y yes, ma'am. Uh, and the police department does it some and the county does it some. Um, we learned recently that the contract with the county for the animal control has expired. And I have made myself a note to be sure and, and, and talk to Mr. McDaniel about that. Uh, I would recommend that we move forward to get that renegotiated. And furthermore, uh, maybe pass along to the county, which will cost us some money but uh, more of the enforcement of, of these loose animals. And we could put that on item eight. Probably be a good idea for a future agenda. Sure, mm -hmm. let's do. Okay, any other citizens? I have or, I'm one sorry. thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to take an opportunity. I know we'll probably do it again later, but this is Mr. Davis's last meeting before the council. And I really want to thank you for everything you've done, stepping in. And on behalf of myself, I'm not going to speak uh, for anybody else other than me, I just want to say thank you, and you know it, we appreciate you. This is the third time you've done this, and it probably doesn't get any easier. <laughs> but but on on behalf of I my, thought it was me just getting old. But, <laughs> <laughs> but on on behalf of myself, I I, I want I want to say thank you for everything you've done and keeping everything together until Mr. McDaniel gets here. So thank you. Thank That's you. Go to your head, you still got another week. It seems, Don, that we have an opening for a dog catcher. <laughs> <laughs> Enter. For a oh. <laughs> and was turned down. <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> Interim dog catcher. We haven't had that one before. Um, all right, any more visitors? Wished, I don't have any more uh, speaker request forms. If not, we'll move on to item eight. And I think we can definitely put that on a future agenda. And I know that contract, even Mr. Barton and I talked about, um, we, we will want to take up with Mr. McDaniel. Um, also, uh, the Kirkad Board of Directors, we have a vacancy there. And I think we're going to, you want to yes. mention that? Th thank you, Mayor. Uh, yes, we, uh, Justin McDonald has resigned from the uh, appraisal dis district uh, administrative board and uh, we it is he is our representative and we need to replace him and uh, so I would ask that if any of you have any recommendations uh, for that and uh, we've asked Ms. Barry to send out a uh, an announcement and encourage anybody that might be interested to put their name forward and then that will be on your next council agenda because they want to do it uh, by the end of May uh, do you know how much longer he had to serve? This I, will be a replacement. I, I know. do not. Okay. They, they are two-year terms. Uh, 
but I don't know where we are within that two years. I think it was just last year that we appointed him. But, but, but oh, you're talking about that, but he doesn't, if I remember right, the policy says you serve until you're replaced. But mm. Yeah. It said, on most of the boards. This is effective. This, this is effective uh, May 31st, his resignation. Uh, so if we, so if we put it on the next agenda, we'll be fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're, the policy is the procedure that we will put it on the website and then we can bring nominees as well and we discuss it and we'll make a selection. Okay. Any other items for future agendas? If not, uh, we'll move on to item number nine, executive session. Um, I believe there's something in 9A to consider, so I would look for a motion. Move into executive session 551-071 and 072 for the agenda. Second. This is for uh, discussion of 800 Junction Highway. We have a motion and we have a second. All in favor, please raise your hand. Motion carries 5-0. So we will adjourn into a closed session at 739. Thank you all very much. You're welcome to stay. Okay, let the record show that we are out of executive session at 758. There were uh, no uh, votes taken in executive session. We are now on uh, item 10, which is action on items discussed in executive session. Do I have a motion? I move that we uh, authorize uh, the city manager to update the appraisal on the property located at 800 Junction Highway. Second. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. All in favor, please raise your hand. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you very much. Item number 11 is adjournment at 7.59. We will adjourn. Thank everybody for coming.